Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies. Today we are jumping into a hotly requested subreddit that is r slash pro revenge. Now usually I'm a bit more of a petty revenge guy because I don't want to see anybody get hurt. But apparently these stories have been handpicked by our very own Lady Nix. I have not vetted them myself but I have confidence that they are absolute bangers so <laughs> without any more hesitation let's go ahead and jump right into these stories the flight from hell 11 <laughs> four years ago this is a classic let's see what it do short-term redditor extremely fast admirer this is not my own story but my dad's during his travel from florida to new york my father prefers to arrive on time in anything in life he's a stickler for that kind of thing so to my amazement, when he told me this awesome story of how he sought revenge, although indirectly, I was grinning from ear to ear while listening. Of course, my father arrives on time to his flight. At boarding time, the plane was a bit empty, something like two or three rows were empty in the very back, and my father loves to sit in the back because it's less stressful, and proven to be safer in the event of a plane crash. So there's freedom to choose the seat that you want, and my father does so. Bags put in the overhead compartment, empty seats on either side of him, and life is bliss. That is, until the plane is delayed. A minor inconvenience, but nothing too detrimental. Five minutes past delayed, then ten minutes, then twenty, then thirty. Everyone on the plane is wondering why this damn plane won't take off. And then it happens. A family of five, which we'll call the anuses. <laughs> Father, mother, two sons, and an infant board the a board the plane. Oh, little infant anus. <laughs> Don't take that out of context. If you've ever rode on a plane before, you'll understand that this is almost unthinkable. Planes love to take off on time, and if you're even five minutes late, you will not be able to board said plane. So here go the anuses boarding a plane 30 minutes after it's supposed to have taken off. No problem. There are plenty of empty seats, and then we can finally get rolling. Nope! The anuses walk directly to my father, and the row he's sitting in, and says, These are our seats! Well, of course, my father proclaims that there are a multitude of empty seats, and they can just take one of those. Nope! They want their seats on their tickets, and they weren't having it any other way. Another thing about planes, it is federal law that all passengers must sit in their assigned seats so that in the case of a plane crash, all the bodies can be accounted for and identified, although it's not enforced that much. The anuses must have their seats, so they call over a flight attendant, now F.A., and explain their situation. The flight attendant sides with the anuses, quoting the law and how my father must relocate. Having lost, my father then gets up, collects his belongings, and proceeds to move to another seat. The seat that he chose, his seat, on his ticket, which is about five rows up, and a middle seat. Only problem is that there is someone already sitting there. So he tells the guy that that is his seat, and he'd like to sit there now. <laughs> the guy looks baffled when flight attendant chimes in and says, Sir, there are open seats in the back, why don't you just take one of those? The f- <laughs> Obviously outraged at this point, my father then says, but you just told me to move out of my seat because it was theirs, when there were also many seats available. Now when I do the same, there's a problem. Flight attendant just says the same spiel again, but my father doesn't relent. He wants his seat now. He recites the very law that she used against him. <laughs> Flight attendant defeated, then asks the guy to relocate as well. This causes a domino effect, and the guy goes to his assigned seat and asks to sit there and so on and so forth until the entire plane has been rearranged and this plane is now an hour and a half behind departure schedule. <laughs> the delay in the flight now sets off some red alerts for airport security and the higher ups at the terminal, JetBlue I believe. Airport police, upper management and god knows who else are now at the terminal gate to inquire as to why this plane is still here. They board the plane to talk to the pilot about the delay and he says that he held the plane to let some late passengers board. Now, that's against policy, because as stated before, they like planes to be on time. They inquire a bit more as to the situation, and it's all explained by the flight attendant, how they arrived late, they won their seats, and then the whole plane had to be rearranged. <laughs> Pissed off that one, the pilot held the plane to accommodate the anuses, 
and two, the anuses asked for their seats, which then caused a domino effect, and three, it comes out that the anuses are in fact the pilot's family, brother or something, which caused him to hold the plane in the first place. They then ask that the anuses leave the plane immediately because you should have never been on this plane from the beginning. They reprimand that pilot for abusing his position and indirectly causing this entire fiasco and refund my father's ticket because of the absurd request by the anuses. <laughs> the plane finally takes off two and a half hours later, lord. My father has a full refund, about $500, and the anuses have to wait for the next flight. This was all at 11 p.m. Good flight? I think so. <laughs> Edit. People are commenting that it was their seats and they have every right to ask for them. Yes, you're absolutely correct in that aspect. But then you also comment that it was a full family and maybe they wanted to sit together. In this aspect, no, you're wrong because as stated in the story, there were two to three empty rows on both sides of the plane. If anyone has ever rowed a plane, there's usually three seats per row on either side of the plane, making it a total of six seats per aisle, A1 to A6. So there was a potential 12 to 18 seats available, with my father taking up only one of those seats. It's extremely unreasonable to arrive late, then ask my father to move when there were 17 other seats available. More than enough space for them to sit as a family. Also, I don't know when or how he bought his tickets, but if he bought them late, anyone who has ever bought a plane ticket knows that you don't have a choice in which seat you buy anymore. It's first come, first serve, and the reason that the plane was that empty anyways was because it was a very late night flight. My father likes to board the plane last, so when walking through the aisle, he saw his seat was taken, to which he said, F*** it, I'll just go sit in the back because I was the last one on the plane, and I know no one is coming to claim these seats. Some also commented that the plane being delayed is up to the airline. Unless you work for an airline, it's pretty safe to assume that the reason that the plane was held up for 30 minutes was because the pilot held it for his late family to board the plane. Edit 2. Grammar. Plus, no one's denying the fact that my father might also be an asshole in this situation. <laughs> in my personal opinion, taking revenge isn't the high road, and anyone who elects to take revenge is inherently an asshole in that given situation. There are very few stories on this pro-revenge subreddit in which they are actually not assholes as well. Two assholes don't make a saint, but two assholes make a right. <laughs> what? <laughs> so now that the anuses have been removed from the plane, I have to wonder if your father went back to the seat that he liked the best, or <laughs> did he stay in his assigned seat now that he knew that it was part of federal law? <laughs> the federal law, which nobody takes seriously, apparently. The anuses probably did know about that seat being like the safest in a crash or whatever, and for that reason I would have highly encouraged them to sit somewhere else. <laughs> How can you value one human life over another? Well, it's, it's pretty easy, dude. <laughs> it's a black and white equation, isn't it? Would you trade one OP's dad for five anuses? Five anonymous anuses? <laughs> yeah, I guess I would. I guess I would. I don't think I would have gotten up and moved personally. I certainly wouldn't have turned the other cheek either. I would have probably scooted over into the sixth available seat, since there were only five family members, and done my best to make that trip absolutely miserable for every last one of them. <laughs> but then you have to sit next to five anuses, so probably OP's dad's answer was the correct answer in this situation. And I also think that the pilot should have gotten much more than a reprimand. But I do understand it's probably hard to find a pilot on short notice, so <laughs> go ahead, finish the flight, and we'll fire you when you get back. <laughs> ah, anyways, pretty good pick. I love it. <laughs> it rolls downhill, doesn't it? I definitely hope you guys enjoyed this classic Reddit story, and we will jump into the next one right now. Don't fire the guy who holds the patents. Well, duh two days ago, so this one's pretty fresh. This is not my story. Dang, this is like the third person story video. <laughs> Interesting. I was present for it, sure, but I did not see all of it personally. Rather, this is my father's story. Wow, again, with the dad stories. Amazing. Was this on purpose? <laughs> so, some context. My father had a degree in chemical engineering either a master's or a doctorate. 
It had taken him years to get, and he was very proud of that. Thanks to his training, he had found his way working for many well-known companies, working primarily with the procedures used to make various things. Over time, he would privately began working on an idea that would revolutionize how school and gym lockers worked. See, my father realized that there was a problem with those type of metal lockers. Namely, that it was very easy for a person to break into them. What's more, as the lockers were designed, there were multiple exposed moving parts, which meant that if a student put too many books in one, or really got anything against the door, the locker could be jammed shut, making it nearly impossible to open. So for several years, my dad toyed with a number of ideas, before hitting on the new design, which would solve all of those problems. The inner workings of the locker's locking mechanism would be contained within the door in such a way that one, it was impossible for someone to shim or break into, and two, the entire mechanism would be enclosed, and three, it was relatively maintenance free. Now, at this point, my father was the vice president of manufacturing, and apparently there wasn't a clause in his contract that said that if he designed anything while working for the company, then he had to turn that over to them for profit, which I do see a lot for programming jobs and stuff like that. Which is just ridiculous if it's something that you did on your own free time. But that's a rant for another video, I suppose. Dad still approached the company, offering them the design, but they weren't interested. Dad sat on the design for a while, before eventually just taking out several patents on them and then forgetting about them. About six months after his first attempt at getting the company interested, the parent company's owner slash chairman of the board passed away, and the board opted to sell off some of the holdings. The company my dad worked for was part of that. The new owners were young guys who seemed to think that they knew everything, as young business owners always seem to think. The first order of business is to blame everything on the guy before me. Professor, I'll ruin you like I ruin this company. Terrific. And they set about changing 99% of the ways things were done. At some point, they stumbled across the plans that my father had designed. Now, that's where things turn curious. They really wanted to start producing this new design, but as they didn't have all the plans and processes laid out for them, they had to turn to my father for answers. Rather than asking him how to do it, or licensing the patents, as any reputable company would have done, they ordered him to turn over all his work or else they would fire him. Dad stood his ground and refused. The new owners and my father went back and forth arguing over details for several weeks before finally the new owners fired my father for insubordination. <laughs> Idiots. So on to the revenge. There may be more to this, but I'm not entirely sure if it's just pro-revenge. It could border on nuclear based on what happened some years later, though I'm not certain that what happened later had anything to do with my father's actions. So, after cleaning out his office and packing things in the trunk of his car, my father headed home and made a few phone calls. He must have gone through eight or nine different calls before he got in touch with someone who was interested in what he had to say. See. My dad was under no illusions that the company that had fired him wasn't going to just make the patented lockers on their own. He also knew that though the company itself was relatively small, the owners had money and there was no way that he could fight them. However, a larger company could, so he contacted the major competitors and made them an offer. He eventually set up a meeting with some people, wheeled out the prototype that he had made, explained how everything worked, and noted that with this system, the company could revolutionize the way lockers were both designed and improve both safety and security. What's more, as he was the only patent holder for the next seven years or so, that meant that this company could be the only company to produce them. The competitor jumped at the chance and bought all the patents for the design and the process. They even paid my dad a substantial consultancy fee to go out to their manufacturing site and teach their crews how to make the needed tool and die sets to produce them. Less than six months after the first company had fired him, their number one competitor was completely destroying them in the market with this new design. And there wasn't a damn thing that the first company could do about it. They did try suing my father, claiming that he had stolen their intellectual property. But that case quickly evaporated when they had to admit under oath that they'd never actually signed a contract with him, and that there was no requirement that he turn over anything that he created to the company. In the seven years from when the second company bought the locker design and process patents, they pretty handily moved into the markets that they'd previously been unable to. The first company soldiered on, but 
By the time the patent had finally expired, they were a shadow of their former selves. Oh, beautiful. The new owners had sold the company at a loss, with the competitor buying it, only to shut that production facility down due to redundancy. Oh my god! Put maybe 200 people out of work, though given how they'd lost so much business, I'd wager that it was actually far less than that. So yeah, the new guys didn't want to play ball, threatened the guy that held the patents on something that they wanted to do, and then fired him, only to have him take everything to their competitor and effectively put them out of business. God, that's tasty. Oh. Edit, to answer some of the questions that have arose, one, you don't know what degree level he was? My father and I had a difficult relationship. There are very few good memories I have of him, and it wasn't until shortly before his death in 2007 from a stroke that I really started to connect with him. I resented him for most all of my life because he was more career-minded than anything. I figure we moved some 10 times in 20 years and it greatly affected me. For a rather long period of time, I'm ashamed to say, I hated my father and I wanted nothing to do with him. Two, you must have ended up wealthy. Not really. Any money that dad earned off his little endeavor was lost after the incident that left him disabled. Medical bills being what they are, by the end of it we were pretty much broke. Sad. 3. Patents last 20 years. Design patents don't. They last 14, but the courts have historically sided with companies infringing on design patents after 7 years, so long as the infringing company develops their own method to produce whatever design is being used and modifies or changes it. 4. What company was this? You know I can't tell you that. Why not? <laughs> 5. Any variation of how did the new owners not know? That answer is pure speculation on my part. However, I got the impression that the owners were in their mid to late 20s and trying to act like investors. The company was on offer relatively cheap from what I know, but had a rather long history in the manufacturing field. Jesus, please, man. I mean, I'm so satisfied to see these snarky business owners get what was coming and have their business crash and burn into the ground. But I'm also so sorry that 200 people had to lose their jobs basically because it rolls downhill, just like in the last story. Very similar, these two. I'm glad they're in the same video, because I get the same vibe from both of them. I'm sure with enough digging, somebody could figure out which company this actually was, but I mean, there's so many locker manufacturers out there. It's an unexpectedly competitive field. <laughs> you never really think about lockers, you know what I mean? They all just kind of do what they do and stand there and perform their purpose, and we hardly pay them any never mind. The arrogance of the wealthy is always just something that astounds me as well, you know? They're like, well, my daddy gave me a lot of money, and that means I'm smarter than everybody else, right? <laughs> About to learn a hard lesson, boy. That's why people who work their way from the bottom to the top are generally more successful than people that were like, yeah, I bought this. <laughs> Oh, you bought a whole company and drove it into the ground. Congratulations. <laughs> if I end up with a, a relatively healthy nest egg to leave my children, I'll probably put it in a trust or something like that and just trickle out enough that, you know, it's some extra pocket money, but you still need to get a job <laughs> in order to survive. Because that's the only way that we as humans can really learn what it means to have money and do stuff and be good at that stuff that we do. You know what I mean? It's like you hand your kids a couple million bucks that you spent your whole life saving up and they're gonna just squander it into the ground. Don't do it. Put it in a trust. I haven't written my will yet, but uh, my wife and I have discussed this at length. We're very aware of our own mortality. But I mean, let's be honest, if I died tomorrow, there there wouldn't be anything left. <laughs> I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm dead, sorry. Good luck covering the funeral costs. <laughs> oh. It's a dark note to go out on, but that's where I'm going to wrap it. <laughs> Only two stories, but this is a pretty beefy video. They were long stories. And I've got a few more pro revenges recommended to me, so I'm going to save those for some other videos. And then maybe we could get back to, like, the daily content, which I know people would enjoy very much. And it would help out my channel as well. So with that said, I hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the video. Check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon, and my other channels. 
And I'd like to give a shout out, as always, to my beautiful, beautiful patrons helping me to live the dream. Just Austin, Robert Waits, Dot Nathan, Crimson Albedo, Lady Nix, Radimus Cisco, Damon Darkstar, and the OG, Nico the Legend. I appreciate you guys so much for listening along. You are definitely the truest of heroes. So keep yourself safe out there. Wear your masks, wash your hands, because you are loved, you are valued, and you definitely deserve it. I shall see you again tomorrow, friends, and until then, bye bye. As any reputable, as any reputable, as any reputable.